Hello, this is intended to be a fairly short video which can act as an introduction to the use of OBS or Open Broadcast Studio and it's intended for educators, teachers and I teach in higher education but it should be relevant for primary or secondary teachers. Um, prior to March 2020 I thought I'd made quite a number of screencasts and I'd use them for lecture content, I'd use them for feedback, I'd had my students doing tasks in them. I thought I was quite um, versed in screencast making. However, March 2020 came and I've just spent the last year and more um, working in a blended learning model where the number of videos that I've had to make and the the amount that of time that I'm spending online and doing live screencasts, live teams teaching, which I'd never done before, um, has meant that I've sought out new tools to make it more engaging and to give me more flexibility in um, presenting content on the screen and OBS is the best tool that I've used this year so what I'm going to try and do is show you how to um, get into OBS, how to make good use of it. This is not an advanced or even for that matter um, intermediate video, this is for people who have um, never used it before and just need to get into it and use it and what you should see is that quite quickly you can get in and use OBS and, and get some benefit from it and then time spent in OBS. For me I've spent lots of time getting used to it and, and finding new tricks but I think I'm going to be using this or something like it for many many years. Now I'm recording in a different screencast tool but I'm recording the window of OBS so what you can see in front of you is my face and this is what's known as a scene that's been set up in OBS and you can also see the OBS software around. So I thought this would be useful so that you can see the workings of it and you can see um, how I build things. What you see on the screen is I'll see if I can draw on here. What you see on the screen is <clears throat> on the left hand side of the screen um, we can see scenes. Excuse my eyes because there's a flip going on here. And then there is sources as we go to the second column. There's an audio mixer and you can see as I speak, or actually I'm playing a theme tune on this theme, even though you can't hear it, but that's what's making the, the graphic equalizer move. There's scene transitions is the fourth column. And then there's controls on the fifth column. Um, and I'm going to take you back to scenes on the left hand column. A scene is a combination of different sources. So you can see in this scene, we are in this main cam, music plus graphics. You can see that I've got, and as I click each one of these sources, I turn this one off here, um, as I click each one of these sources, you'll see it highlight. So this is the institutional logo. Underneath that logo, there is um, a graphic bar, which I made in a different program, and um, it was something I learnt, but you can put graphics on it. There's a theme tune playing, and in my opening um, scenes, I'll often have some music playing over my voice just to introduce it and to try and make it sound engaging. And then when I go into the main lecture in the other scene, the music is not there. There's some text, and I can change that text really quickly. Um, you'll see it um, just in here where it says OBS demonstration. So I go in there, change the text to so prior to a lecture. Um, I can just change the topic really quickly, and all of the rest doesn't need to change. I've got a slanted graphic there. Um, this is my mic that I'm using. And then this is the video capture device. What I'm going to show you how is how to set up a new scene. And I'll show you how quick it is. So, let, so I went to the top and scene selection. I'm going to type in practice. So now you'll see on the left-hand column that there is no scene and you've even lost my face. So we'll call this scene. We're going to rename this scene. We're going to call it just head. And then we move on to the sources, which is the second column down. Let's see if I can get my face back on here. We add a source using the plus button. And then if you look down, these are all the different types of um, components which we can add to the scene. So there's audio input, which is my mic. There's a display capture, and I'm using two screens. And I'll have my slides, my PowerPoint or my Google Slides, um, on the other screen. So we'll use that in a second. Media source, that's where I can add music. I can add text. I can add a video capture device, so let's add, let's add that one. So I'm going to add that one, um, and there we go. So you can see we can configure that media source, and then we can also move it around. I know that that camera is actually wider, so what I'm going to do is go into resolution, press custom, and then I'm going to, oops, missed it, didn't I? Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose the, the largest, the appropriate um, resolution that I know my camera is based at. Now I'm just trying to rebuild a basic screencast or um, a webcam shot which seems a bit of a waste of time when you 
first do it but this is just the kind of base scene which I'll come back to lots and when I'm teaching in teams quite often I'll have this one on and it just looks like I'm in teams but then with a the flick of a switch I can change the vision really really well to three four five different scenes if I want them whatever's appropriate so the video capture device is set and what you saw then was the fact that we can shrink it we can drag it we can move it we can crop it I need to add my voice so I'm going to add audio input um, audio input okay I'm going to choose um, in this case I'm going to choose my webcam microphone if you have multiple microphones you just or one microphone you choose default what we can also do with in audio input which is a great thing I've um, really enjoyed using it with OBS is um, we can go back to properties but we can also add filters so a filter if I press add these are all sound filters which if you're any if you have any level of familiarity with um, editing of music or um, playing playing and recording a music then you might know some of these um, I spent some time working it out but the ones that were useful for me are noise suppression and there's filters, sorry, there's settings and choices, but just go with the default. And then there's also a noise gate. Now the noise gate does take a little bit of playing with, but what you find is that you've got this closed threshold and open threshold. Now if you want to eliminate some noises, some um, humming noises um, or some noises in the background, then what you can do is um, we can change that so that it only only starts playing the sound um, or recording the sound when um, it goes above a certain level so general hum humming which you might be able to hear because I'm not using it at the moment won't be recorded and then if it gets really loud and shouty then it will also not play that through so at the moment I'm just going to um, I'm going to um, I'm going to remove that I'm gonna, no I'm going to leave that one in there um, so noise suppression recommended noise gate also recommended takes a little bit of time to work out so what you've got here what I've got here is I've got one scene which has got sound and it's got vision what I now need to do is add a second scene so this second scene I'm going to call slides um, so you see we start with no sources so I need to add my camera again so the video we just add the same one add existing oops click it add existing and there I am again now I want to do something different with this in the scene so I'm gonna crop it slightly so I'm gonna press alt and then drag it in I'm gonna press alt and drag it in alt and drag it down That makes it a little bit more cozy make myself a little bit smaller now we could just rebuild a normal screencast um, scene but I'm the one of the beauties of this is it gives us variability flexibility so in some of my setups I have my, my head at up there on the right sometimes I have my, my head in the middle or down below or bigger or smaller but I can flick bet between when I'm on teams or when I'm recording so I'm gonna leave myself there for now I need to add my voice again so add the same one as before and then I'm going to add the slides so this time I'm going to use display capture now again on my second screen I have some Google slides which are um, which you will see in just a second. So that's now the whole of my second screen. So I'm going to choose that, but that's not quite how I want it to be. I want that to be next to my face, and I obviously don't want the browser because that doesn't look very nice. But what it enables me to do when I'm presenting using the presenter mode in Google Slides, it presents in the browser, and that enables, enables me to flick between different tabs in the web browser in Chrome and also it allows me to use one of my a drawing tool that I've got in the bookmarks and with the tabs at the top of my Chrome so I've got a um, can't see what it's called but I've got a drawing tool up there so um, now you see my head's disappeared so what I need to do is change the um, order of these sources so I'm gonna the two arrows change the order so if I move that up and I move that up it's above display capture so you can see my head is up there now so now we have the essence of OBS we have two scenes set up so now if I go back down to sources and I click just head it will show my head or if I go for slides it will show the slides again it might not be looking like it's worth the extra bother but that's just me showing you how quick it and easy it is to set up um, 
uh, scenes. So I think what I can do is I can um, duplicate this one and let's call it Slides 2. Slides 2 is duplicated so it's really easy now to just change my head up to the top. So now what we have is just head, slides, slides 2. I can change the um, transition and I can change the speed in the fade or I can change it to a swipe for example. Um, so if I go whew, slides, just head and there's some other transitions and there's this thing called a stinger which is like uh, Sky Sports whew, in between which again was a trick I had to learn um, but you'll find how to do it on uh, YouTube. So that is how to set up scenes in OBS. That is as easy as it is. I'll show you some of my other collections. Um, one of my favorites would be this latest one, which does have um, involved a plugin, and you can find out elsewhere where to do this. But this is a move or motion transition. And I've had real success with this uh, in Teams because, you, as you might see, this is me in Teams. And then as soon as I want to. Um, cut to my slides especially if I've got an intro which is nice and big and looks like a you know a logo or um, it's not too in, not too in depth or I can change and if I go across to my slides and if I click onto the next one there's my first slide in this mock-up um, if I want more detail on those slides then I've got another one set up which goes just to slides but then I can bring my head back in again and there we go and if I was recording using these and I haven't quite said it yet, but you can record or you can use them in Teams. I think I might have said it. Then I've got an end scene. Now these end scenes, oh, um, my start and my end scenes, if I show you another scene selection, collection. Um, so um, here we go. So oops, sorry, flicking backwards and forwards. So this is the one that I'll use with, um, with the graphics on it. And then you can see I've got a camera up there and then I've also got an ending page like this one now I use this ending page a lot and and um, this one doesn't have any voice on it and my first slide also uh, this one I'll go back and change the slide so I would use the first slide in a in a, a slide set to be the um, the opening credits and I would not have any voice in it but then once I click that once and then I go to my I go back to my face then we have some voice and away we go so there's there's lots of um there's control over it which i like i've talked about the two ways that you can use it um if i go look on the left hand side of the screen if you look on the left hand side of the screen then you'll see start recording which i'm just hovering over there if i press start record now that will record and it will record onto my computer it will drop a file into the video file um and then i can upload that to youtube or to my institutional video hosting software so you press start recording and there's a pause and a stop as well. If I want to use this in Teams, then I would go to Tools, Virtual Cam, Start, and then I go down to Start Virtual Cam. Um, and then, th then when I go to Teams or Zoom, you can go to Devices, Settings, or Settings, Devices. And then rather than just having your camera, you have, there's a new option which is OBS so you can use OBS and um, the feed and then once you're using that then you can flick between the different scenes within OBS uh, sorry within team within OBS but um, publishing onto teams now let's have a look um, I think I've covered all the things I wanted to cover so I hope you found that useful um, there's other videos which show some of these um, tricks in a bit more depth and with a bit more time but this was intended to be that first video that was of use to you um, just to get you started. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.